So, <laughs> are you ready for the craziness? Which is not in these slides because I didn't have time to add the craziness that I wanted. But uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Okay, JavaScript streaming, a quick glimpse into the future. Let's begin. Okay, so first of all, who am I? I'm Shai Resnik. I run JavaScript Israel, a uh, quick Israel. Hires IO, which is <laughs> the best place on the planet to learn about web development. Yeah, we try to, you know, combine uh, humor and, you know, to teach with that, like uh, more boring topics. I'm part of the Quick team uh, as a community DevRel, also a Google developer expert, also for Angular. And quickschool.com is a new website where uh, me and Mishko recorded a free course that teaches about Quick from the ground up, no required prior knowledge. And it's, yeah, combines all the elements of high res IO with the humor and deep learning about quick. Okay, so this is, yeah, quickschool.com. I, I am proud, I don't know Photoshop, but I did that, so yeah, awesome. So what we are going to cover today, we have, uh, we're going to talk about the driving forces of web evolution. Then we'll talk about JavaScript streaming, which is a kind of a new thing. It's not the streaming that you think about. Uh, then we'll do a quick demo, quick, and we'll talk about both, okay? And <laughs> we'll talk about what's next in the quick, you know, uh, land. Okay, disclaimer, all of the opinions and everything is just my po point of view and my predictions for the future. It doesn't mean that it's 100%, you know, correct or like the absolute truth. That's just a quick disclaimer. Okay, so this talk, at least the first part is based on a meeting I had with my team a year ago where I, you know, uh, I told them like, hey, there's this quick new framework uh, that we need to start and pay attention to. And, but, but we're focused on a whole different like area, which is testing and TDD and teaching about that. And they asked me like, okay, why would you want to uh, spend time on a new alpha stage framework? And basically, uh, I started like explaining on the whiteboard all of the context of like, you know, and it became like this stock analysis of like the market and like, you know, what like the needs and all that stuff uh, based on. So I, I've been doing like web development from, from the 90s and I've been like through several evolutions of web frameworks, spilled everything on the whiteboard. And they, in the end, they were like, oh, OK. So, yeah, that uh, sounds like a good idea. OK. Yeah, uh, so in this talk, in that, like on the whiteboard, I tried to ask myself what is inevitable? Like what based on all the patterns of the past is inevitable that will probably will happen in the next few years. So let's talk about the future of the web, okay? In my opinion, it will be just like, the experience will be just like in a desktop application, instant, okay? This is like, the way I think we're going towards. And I think we are now in a transition period. We can all feel it in the air. We see a lot of uh, innovations around this area. Kind of similar to, you know, remember back in the day, we wanted to watch, watch a movie. We needed to download it, right? And wait for like gigabytes of code to download, right? Legally, of course, legally, right? Uh, but we need to wait, right? And then, there was like an evolution there that when we started streaming videos. So if you want to add, like go to the end of the movie, we can just click the end of the you know, movie and just see the, the end of the movie and not wait to download everything. I think this is what's happening, what's starting to shift in web development, the same kind of revolution. And that's a bold prediction. So let me untie it or like explain it. Uh, and basically it starts from two forces that you know, to a simplified version of it. Uh, Mishko, I will uh, separate you. Okay. <laughs> I have like a fraud cache. I don't uh, Okay. Oh, snap. Where's my video? <laughs> yeah, it's resumed. Uh, kind of, yeah, the talk. Okay. Only, you know, some of the people get the jokes. Like always, right? <laughs> Only some of the people get the joke. Okay. Awesome. So, it's not because of you, it's because our jokes are lame. That's the point that I wanted to make. Okay, so two forces that, you know, drive the web evolution, UX and DX. And this will be a simplified 
uh, version of the two. Okay, so what do I mean by when I talk about user UX user experience? So in the, for the context of it, this is a broad topic, right? For, but for the context of this talk, I'm talking about the users waiting for the app to load, the users waiting for the app to respond to our action to be interactive and time spent on redoing work like as a user i don't want to fill the same form that i already filled okay so that's like user experience developer experience very simple in terms of like three things also structure i want to know where everything goes in a predictable way i want to do more with less code i want just one command that does everything behind the scenes for me and it needs to be simple to understand. I don't want to Google again and again, what the hell is this API is doing and all this stuff, right? So this is what I talk about when I talk about developer experience. Now, the ultimate developer experience is doing nothing, right? Like everything works and we can just focus on creating features, right? But there's, the, there's always like what I notice, there's a tension between these two forces. Like there's some kind of a correlation between them when one is up or like, you know, we have more of the, it, the other one suffers and you have less of it. Uh, so let's share a story and talk about the history a little bit about web, of web development. So started back in the nineties, right? We had static web pages, just like, you know, a simple HTML website. Then we transition to dynamic pages, right? Multi-page apps where instead of, you know, loading a static HTML, you had a database and you compute it. So you don't want to re, uh, like, you know, to, um, you, you could re-render, you can render on the fly, like the news website uh, page or something like that, right? Uh, then we transition to a multi-page app plus JavaScript. We had a JavaScript. So it will be like, you know, you can validate several stuff you know, on the browser and not like move to a different and reload like the entire page. And then back in 2004, something like that, we started like with the flash era and flex uh, and such and we call it rich internet applications. Uh, and but basically, and later on, they became single page applications, PAS, okay? Uh, but basically they were the same thing. Instead of loading, right, like every page, we gave the users a more of like a mobile app experience where everything is just like very snappy once you get over like the initial download. So you can, uh, and you can preserve states, state between pages. You don't have to go back and refill everything. And back in 2016 or so, start, we started the, what I call the hybrid era, which is, you know, a combination between the speed of multi-page apps and the experience of single page apps with Technologies like Next.js and, you know, uh, Angular Universal was back then. Sorry. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, so this, this is what I call the hybrid uh, era. So in terms of the two forces, let's see how, like, the, the, they have been affected by this, like, evolution in, uh, in technology. So in terms of user experience, you see, like, it, with each, you know, uh, technology, it got a spike, you know, so every technology we're focusing on improving the user experience in terms of like loading time and runtime and stuff like that. And the drop we had in the beginning is because of the database, right? We had like, you know, like <laughs> as app became bigger, we had more and more to load from the database, right? And then on the later tr transitions, okay, or technologies, uh, it became also about the app size, which was also related to like, you know, loading data and also bad time to interactive or TTI, like how much it takes for the app to respond for the first click or, you know, or interaction of the user. Uh, so we see a drop, we saw a drop there. So um, in terms of developer experience, we see that, you know, every time we had a new technology, we needed to learn something new. And because we need to learn something new, patterns and solutions weren't established yet. So we did a lot of manual work in the beginning until we had libraries and such. So for example, in, uh, let me take like the first uh, the, or the last three in tr transition to back to JavaScript, right? We, we needed to do manual DOM manipulation. Who did here manual DOM manipulation, right? Back in 2009, 10 and before, right? Like writing, right? 98, then Shapir here, yeah. 
posting. So manual DOM manipulation, this is what we needed to do. So we got a drop in developer experience, but we had like a better experience with JavaScript because Flash was like too big and Steve Jobs decided to kill it. So yeah, this is the like example, manual do DOM manipulation versus just binding or like, you know, just, okay, render this text and the framework will take care of it for you, okay? So a lot, you know, do more with less code. So later on, um, we had like also things like manual state management. Whoever wrote his own state management solution, okay, and started like uh, trying to sync up values. Uh, and then we had like evolution there, right? Like uh, uh, solutions like Redux and then like the shift to, towards reactivity and such. And later on, we just like we added, you know, NPM, like node modules from the server, from node, then we can use the same code on the client with the evolution there. And we added a lot of stuff that could do uh, everything like, you know, automatic out of the box. We don't need to write our own component library or state management or stuff like that. But what's the problem with NPM? Node modules, right? Right? So that's, that was, uh, you know, hurting a lot. Not to us, because we don't care. We get everything for free. What? Okay. So we <laughs> suffered. Okay. We didn't suffer because we got the benefit from it, but our user suffered. The last one, now, uh, because our user start to suffer, as you can see, like in terms of user experience, because app took more and more time to load and to be interactive, then we transition to the era of manual optimization, right? Oh, this uh, route is slower. We need to manually optimize or to async, uh, like to dynamically import this part, right? Or the, like you always see 10 performance improvements you can add to your app and to make it faster and stuff like that. And still something we need to do manually. And you see that the manual thing keeps repeating, right? And every time we solve it, we improve developer experience. B basically, what I'm saying here is that we still have manual optimization going like back, like even in the transition between like single page application to hybrid had this manual optimization. Also, in the current, like the state of the art today, we still need to do manual optimizations. Okay, so let's briefly talk about the generations of you know, like I, I try to label it, although it's hard, right? But just uh, how I like to think about it. So the first generation uh, was dynamic pages in my mind because you no know, static pages are not really apps. Um, and then like generation 1.5 is like we added JavaScript. So it's not really a big shift uh, back then at least uh, before Ajax and stuff. But that's like 1.5, the SPAS and RS, like I said, it's the same basic, like basically the same concept. So it's like generation two. And, you know, generation uh, two and a half, what I call the hybrid apps. So they added like improvements, but it's still fundamentally the same technologies uh, with, with an improvement because they didn't really like shift the, the entire thing, like the entire um, way we think about it. So looking at, you know, we, we look at the spikes and because we look at the spikes every time like a, a new technology uh, was added, I, I tried to think myself, like, what will be the generation three? what, how it will look like and which technology could solve it. So we'll have like the spike in user experience and then, and then maybe like, you know, a drop in developers, but what can actually make it, make them go together. So we see that the pattern always the developer experience decrease and we can see that there's a negative cor cor correlation, right? And this is not based on data, right? It's just illustrative, but everybody was here from the nineties, like then, Okay, uh, and, and myself and others. Maybe uh, Liran, yeah, Liran. Okay, can agree that this is basically what happened from the 90s. I tried to think about that, like the developer experience, um, what can make it improve and like break this negative correlation? That's what I wanted like to, to find because if you can find a combination of, of these two, you have something really interesting to look at. As a matter of fact, like great minds are trying to solve this issue. This is like a real issue. This is where everything is going towards, like trying to solve the UX problem 
by maintaining also a good developer experience. So you see prog uh, you know, progress with like, things like signals, SSR, ISR, islands, React server components, you know, lots of basically projects and technologies and techniques that want to solve this problem. Now, just a disclaimer, okay, I'm, I'm part of the Quick team. I really, I'm part of the Angular community. I'm part of the JavaScript community, basically. And, you know, we in, in the Quick team really believe in collaboration and not like com com negative competition or some, something like that. Why? Because a lot of the concepts of Quick was built on top of all of the learnings from all of the ecosystem, all the frameworks. So we're constantly collaborating with other frameworks and frameworks creators uh, and authors to produce basically to help them, they help us because we're all like big one, uh, one big JavaScript family basically, right? And we all benefit when we do this improvement. So every attempt to solve this problem brings new ideas. And so it's welcomed and not like, it's not criticized, at least, you know, in our world. And this is also the values that we want to promote. Okay, so like every solution, everything has benefits and trade-offs. Here, okay, in the, in the current solutions that, uh, that are implementing uh, these strategies, the main, you know, the, 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 the big uh, trade-off that they're all like have is hydration, okay? Uh, who knows what is hydration? Who heard about it? Okay, so I'll, I will explain briefly. So hydration basically is a, a, is a need Okay, so like we said in the hybrid apps, we moved from just client side only to a hybrid, right? We went back to rendering, just like you know, in the old days, which PHP we render the page, the HTML page. But now instead of PHP, okay, we request we request the route, and instead of PHP, we are now using the same JavaScript framework, okay, that is, was on the browser, but we use it, like for example, React, we use it on the server to execute and run the app on the server to produce the templates, the HTML, and to send. Uh, so we basically execute it, what we call play, plain, and then we send this HTML back to the browser, okay? Um, but, and this is just the client-side template plus data, but it's just HTML, right? It's not interactive. So in order to make it interactive, we re-execute the same exact flow, right, that we did on the server, and what we call replay, we're replaying everything to make the app interactive again, to attach all the event listeners and everything. And this is basically hydration, okay? Uh, SSR and server-side rendering and hydration. And then we have a working app, right? So what if we can like leverage and look at all the solutions and think about combining the best of both worlds or all words and try to think about something that will gain the benefits, but maybe not hurt the developer experience or the user experience as app become bigger and stuff like that. So that that was the mindset behind this. So what can like this is the 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 traje trajectory? Okay, last time I'm trying like a big word. <laughs> this is basically the direction that we're going with, right? As app will. Like as app become bigger, uh, we will need to manually optimize our apps, right? Uh, or else, and and then there's a the limit to how much we can manually optimize without paying the cost of hydration. So, what is the solution that can take us to this holy land, okay? Of you know, great user experience and great developer experience, okay? What will take us there? And the solution is. JavaScript streaming. Uh, I didn't have time to add the effect, okay? That was supposed to be. JavaScript streaming. What is JavaScript streaming? So remember the metaphor, right? Downloading versus streaming. It's basically the same concept, but it's more nuanced, right? Because we're not dealing with videos that, is lin that are linear. We're talking about web apps, which are more like choose your own adventure, right? Like, you know, depending on where, which page you go, you want to the next set of steps. How does it work? Like basically broken down into four parts. You chunk your giant app into small parts, like packets, like just like in video. Then 
you produce smart first frame, just like, you know, first frame of the video, right? But it's smarter. It can be interactive. Then you, you do predictive buffering. So you try to predict like what's the, what's next, uh, that the user will do. And then you enter lazy execution mode. So you just execute just the Java, the amount of JavaScript the user needs that, uh, at, at that time and not more. So let's see it in action. Okay. So packets chunking. We, uh, we call, you know, call them chunks. Okay. The metaphor are like packets like packets that you send in video streaming. So this happens at build time. You have your app, you break it into tiny parts, really tiny, on a closure level, on a function level, and it get broken down into many, many, many tiny files and not like gigabytes, okay, or like megabytes of, of an app. Then we go into the smart first frame. This happen happening on the server. Now we do the server-side rendering, just like, you know, the hybrid solution, and then we execute, right? We run the app on the server, and it has a, like memory, right? Like it, it builds like a structure in memory, but then we pause it. What do we mean by pause? We basically save all this, the, the, the less state on the server, like what are the values of the variables? We serialize it, and we, we save it into the HTML. Okay, that's like the, the, that's our like delivery package to the client, the HTML. This is the only thing we send. Then we have like a snapshot of the website. It looks like exactly like you know on first load, but this is not really big. Like you know, this like every current solution can do this. But what happens now on the client time is that we start buffering the chunks, the tiny packets of possible interactions into the cache using a service worker. And it's happened on a separate thread, meaning it doesn't block the interactivity time. You can type on an input, you can do stuff, but it doesn't. Thank you, Afrat Keshe Verikuz. Uh, it doesn't block the users, right? So we start prefetching or buffering, you know, the, the tiny chunks or packets. Now we enter the fourth, fourth stage, fourth stage, uh, lazy execution, right? Like user want to add stuff to the shopping cart. They click on, you know, the button, right? And this button, uh, the JavaScript code for this button, specifically in all of these dependencies, is already there in the cache, okay? So it doesn't like load it on click. It's like already there. So it only execute it and that's it and no other code on the page got executed during the button click only that button click and its dependencies but that's it so this is lazy lazy execution so it does it for any part of the app right so this is javascript streaming and it has trade-offs right it's not like no solution is perfect like we saw first of all it has constraints right it's like everything is async you need to follow special rules in order to do that. The rules are not that like complicated that you need to remember everything. We will see it. It looks very familiar to what we 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 receive, but it's not like normal, you know, uh, rules that we know that we can refer to anything in our app just like that without any wrappers and stuff like that. Because everything needs to be serialized, so we need to wrap stuff right, like with signals, reactive signals, in order to uh, make them like possible, so we can take a snapshot on the server of them. Like new component lifecycle mental model. So with this, with JavaScript streaming, the component actually starts its life on the server. Like, you know, we, we're used to in client side to start on the client, right? Everything on the client, we have access to the DOM, right? But in quick or JavaScript streaming in general, right? It doesn't happen uh, this way and probably more. Still new, still stuff that, that, that is being discovered, right? Right. Okay. So, what are the benefits of this approach? First of all, it breaks the negative correlation. Why? Because you know the app size doesn't matter anymore because we don't need all of this size to load like in current solution because we don't need to re-execute everything in order to build the memory, uh, uh, the structure in memory to know where all the event listeners 
because we flip it outside, uh, uh, upside down and we basically know we start all the interactivity from the event listeners and not from the root of the app. And everything is being done, that's the best part, automatically. Right? Remember, like, automatically. It, you don't need to manually do anything in order to gain this benefit. And also, it opens up new developer experience capabilities, which you have. We'll talk about it, uh, about them in his talk. Those are, like, the main benefits. There are more, but those are the main ones. So, you remember, the manual optimization, now we, have, we don't need to do nothing. And, yeah, we get the instant experience. Now... This instant experience, uh, I try to think about the name of the new generation. Like I told you, I think it will be in instant. So I like, you know, call it instant web apps because I'm not that creative. Okay. So that's why I think, uh, you know, uh, that's a term that I like to think about this ne next generation. So it will be like IWA or Iowa or something like that. Right. And that's like my prediction at least of where we're going towards to, to achieve this. Now let's talk about Quick. So what is Quick? Quick enables you to create instantly interactive JavaScript apps at any scale without effort. And this is important. Instantly interactive, right? You, you, can, you don't need to wait for the iteration and stuff like that. At any scale, no matter, you don't need to think about adding another like, you know, NPM package that, you know, and all that stuff, right? And without effort, you don't need to manually do anything to, to achieve that. So this is quick. And it's the first open source solution that is built from the first principles to enable JavaScript streaming. So like I'm saying it's the first open source because it got inspired by it was inspired by Google Wiz, which is an internal uh, framework at Google that you all know and use because it's powering Google search. Like Google search when you go to Google and you ask for like 3 plus 4 it opens up a calculator, right? And as for a movie, it opens up a movie strip. They, they're not bundling all of the app inside of one, like, you know, gigabytes of, of you know, possibilities into one app. They're using the same techniques in order to achieve that, right? So that's the same principles that Quick is uh, built upon. But in order to, to gain, like, a better developer experience and make it open source so everybody could use it, it required lots and lots of nightless, uh, sleepless nights in order to, to gather. Not by me, by the team who actually uh, wrote, uh, built it. Okay, so a few features and then we'll jump into and see some demos. Are you okay by now? Yeah? Anybody need like a fist bump? Okay, awesome. Cool. Okay, let's talk about uh, features, then demo, then I will sing something and everything will be okay. Okay, awesome. So it's familiar, you know, uh, uh, you know, especially for uh, people who are uh, working with JSX based frameworks, use JSX, Hook, context, all the things that, you know, especially React developers know. Um, and the reason be behind it was not to, you know, teach yet another syntax to make it very easy to just write your apps. Um, it's fully featured, right? Um, and, and the team is constantly like, trying to evaluate what are the best developer, like one of the principles of Quick is focusing on developer experience, like making the best developer experience that we can. So we always constantly scanning like what's the best from each solution and try to uh, uh, embed it into Quick to make the developer experience better. Um, it has a building meta framework. So you get like file based routing, so static site generation, all the features that you have in XJS and in other like meta frameworks and, and such built in out of the box. And it's, uh, and, and you have new and shiny capabilities because this uh, JavaScript streaming capability opens up like a new developer experience. Uh, uh, possibilities like server functions. It, it can also like, you know, run on the edge. It's like, you know, uh, very uh, cutting edge, uh, pun intended. Okay. Uh, and also it has a migration path. Uh, we have a quickify method. Uh, and I think uh, Mishko is going to talk about the uh, quickifying stuff. So yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it works. But now let's start with a demo. Okay, I want to show, hopefully, the demo will be like this and not like this. Okay. 
So let's pray for the demigods. That will be okay. So, so uh, demo. What are we going to demo? What we basically want to show is, let's see, is the streaming. How streaming look like, right? Because it's very hard to, to see. So first of all, let's just create a, a, an app. Okay, so I'm like being brave now and uh, hopefully the internet here is, uh, what, zooming? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let's do a quick demo. Yes, basic app. Yes, yes, okay. This is the CLI, right? I'm just trying to show you. It won't be a demo of like the, you know, capabilities of quick, more like the outcome of your app or JavaScript streaming. But on the way, I wanted to show you like how it is like familiar and stuff like that, right? So we created this quick demo. Uh, let's open code. Let's see. Uh, let me know if the zoom is okay, the zoom level. And let's run the app just so we'll see what's up. Okay. Uh, like you see, yeah. Uh, okay. So pmpm uh, dev. Let's see if, yeah, I need to run pmpm install. Probably. Yes. Okay. No worries. It's pmpm. So it will be faster, right? Who uses pmpm? I don't have stickers, but high five. It is nice. Okay. Obviously, because I said that, it won't be faster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I should have uh, thought about it. But as you can see, I love the reused. Every time I see reused, I'm feeling happy. Little angel gets his wings. So, PMPM dev. Let's see the app. This is like the starter app, right? You, you can do a lot of things. You can celebrate if you want, right? You can, uh, I don't know, see like the uh, like quick start. Uh, you can play with the, the counter. You can see more like a complicated, I don't know, like a fun visuals. You have like a to-do app, like all these parts, right? Like, you know, it's not uh, complicated. Uh, it's like small, but you have like a, a web app uh, here. Now, what I wanted to show you, basically, is I wanted to add, uh, by the way, I don't think it works on Windows, uh, but on Mac and Linux, if you uh, click Alt, you can actually, like, it will take you to the code of this element in VS Code, which is awesome. I think we have a bug on Windows. But anyway, so let's see the code, and let's. I want to add, like, a simple input and binding to that input. That's it. That's the demo. Ah, I'm a super developer. Okay, so uh, as you can see, we have uh, basically file-based routing. So every route has like an index index TSX, which represent this like you know place uh, like the the name of the folders represent the uh, the name of the route to route to, and the index is what will be rendered. We have layouts and all that stuff. And basically, I'm trying to get to the hero that we saw like this this part. I want to edit here so. We search for the hero and let me open it up. It has a bunch of uh, you know, styles and defaults and all this, but it's JSX basically, right? It's not uh, it's not something that uh, is like foreign or something like that. What you can see that we have like instead of a component, we have like component dollar. This is important, and you have in his uh, talk we'll talk more about that. But other than that, is basically very simple. So um, what we want to add here uh, after like, uh, so fantastic to have you here. Thank you. So I will add like a section and let's add like uh, input, right? Where are you co-pilot when I need you? Okay. And let's, let's add something that will uh, render this, uh, this input value. So with quick, uh, like I said, we need to wrap stuff, right? And it's a good thing because these stuff are signals, which are reactive, which eliminates a lot of the manual state management uh, man uh, that you need to do on your own. Uh, so I use like, I don't know, my input signal, just like, you know, I'm not creative. <laughs> and we'll use a hook called use signal, which will be, yeah, just like, uh, just empty string okay awesome and now i have a signal a signal is a container of a value so basically you can you know render its value and we can bind it to an input just uh, as simple as this okay not uh, 
Yeah, like this. Okay, and that's it. I think it will save. Hopefully, if the demo god will be with me. Okay, it's a little bit uh, smaller. Let's uh, add like I don't know, like a style here. I'm cheating, right? Like padding and. Let's do it. Pixels and all REMs and stuff like that. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, if we write, we have binding. Yeah, we did it. Thank you, thank you very much. Right? And this was AngularJS. So, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, that's genius, right? Like, what, what else do we want from a firmware? Like binding, right? Anyway, but that's not the, what I wanted to show. What I want to show is to take this input and to showcase JavaScript streaming with it. How do we do that? So what I did is I took two of the most popular frameworks or hybrid frameworks, meta frameworks and such to date. And I created the same exact thing. Like I used their starters. I actually stripped the, everything out of the page and removed everything, like even styles and stuff and just left uh, an input and a binding, and that's it. And, I'm, and I build it, optimized for production, and basically they are mimicking the same thing, but without all of this extra JavaScript and you know, other sections of the page and such. And what I want to show you is a demo of hydration. Okay, so let's do it, but let's do it uh, in a smarter way. Let's do it in incognito, okay? And you know what, let me, yeah, incognito. Okay, so what I did is I, I removed all of the possible ways you could guess which framework it is. So it won't be biased toward like a, like a, a specific solution. So I even uh, uh, changed the port number Right, so what we see here is, you know, hydration-based solution, non-streaming technology, and you can see that uh, everything works, right? It's not like uh, I didn't uh, do anything, nothing out my sleeve, in my sleeve, right? But when we op if we'll open the same page in slow 3G mode, right? Um, and basically I chose slow 3G in the network um, throttling, this will simulate a slow device, like a you know, normal device, slow, uh, slow device and slow, basically slow connection. And now I want to show you when I enter that page, I will try to click on the input and see when it get, gets rendered. And what we're about to see is me trying to type slowly, even not like fast, then everything I wrote will get deleted and we replay and I will start like think about the user, you know, filling up an insurance uh, uh, um, form and having it deleted with hydration. OK, so let's uh, I think it was a bit around these glasses. OK, so I'm here and I'm uh, writing and let's see. And we enter and let's see it in action. Right. Without cash. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So it actually like deleted all of the state that I had. So this is the first technology, right? Now we have another technology, right? We have uh, a second framework. Now this framework is smarter, so it will actually save the state just like you know preserve it and continue from there but it will still take let's start fresh a, a, you know the same amount of time basically maybe a little bit faster so again slow 3g are you paying attention there okay you didn't see this demo yet <laughs> kidding okay so we're about here so second technology yet another non-streaming technology I uh, won't tell you which one. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You see this, right? So it's like around seven, eight, it depending. I, and I have like a, a faster right, computer and such, right? But this is local host with no nothing on the page. Just a tiny like, piece of JavaScript 
that is binding my input value to the DOM. That's it. And it took that much time on slow you know, network and also slow device. Now we're asking ourselves, OK, what about quick? So in order to showcase it in quick, if you open it up in development mode, it won't be optimized because it optimized for developer experience while you're developing. So in order to do that, we need to, oh, why are you shouting at me? OK, we open it in preview mode, OK? Uh, and this will build the production version and will preview it locally. So we get like all the buffering and all the things that the Quick is optimized for. And for the following magic, I will need someone to give me like a magical music, you know, ta -ta -ta, ta -da -da, ta -da -da, like this, okay? So who volunteers? Who want to give them? A, because I will pick pick you up, right? <laughs> Thank you very much. But uh, you need to come here if you want to volunteer. <laughs> what? Yeah, you need to talk, but. Uh, Nobody wants to do ta 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 na na ta da. So we will all do it. Okay, <laughs> that's the solution. Okay, so um, let me close. Let me open in incognito again. Slow 3G, right? And when I'm, I think I'm around here. Okay, so we'll do this experiment. Uh, well, I think I'm basically around here. If I checked like last time, and let's see how fast. We will get like the one, two, three, which number, you know, we'll get to, right? You say it's three, let's see. So I need the music now. Ta, 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 da, da, ta, da, da, ta, 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 let's see. Ta, da, da, ta, da, da, ta, 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 one, two, three, four, five, five, six, blah, blah, blah. okay? Again, let's try again. No, nothing. No hydration, no clear of the state, no waiting for anything. Just instant, okay? This is the instant web app, right? Let's try it again, just in case, okay? Um, again, opening up development uh, tools, slow 3G. Again, going here, I think it was. Da, 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 da. Let's see. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay? And this is JavaScript 3. Thank you, Mishko, for paying attention. It was a very, uh, meaning a lot to me. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, so this was the demo. Let's get back to our slides. Ah, we had a small hiccup, but not uh, okay. Not that, not too bad. Fortunately, we had Dan here to save us. Okay, cool. So uh, let's wrap up with the state of Quick as of now, and we'll move on. So uh, in terms of ecosystem, uh, we have lots of uh, libraries already created. We have a quick UI component library, soon to be released beta. We have an NX integration, Cypress, Playwright, Superbase, Cloudflare, Prisma, Vercel, Storybook, you know, everything like, you know, that you need for, for app, but we're still more coming because it's a young framework and needs more help. We see a growth in the community now uh, after that it became 1.0, people started using it. Obviously, Quick Israel like fills up the room here, which is a, a, a big thing. We have um, uh, lots of communities like this in, all over the world, and more and more are joining. We have Quick Heroes, which are which is our um, uh, top contributors program uh, that uh, meets once a month with the core team and helps uh, either by contributing to the code, by developing the ecosystem plugin, by hel helping others in Discord. We have a very, very uh, strong community and uh, loving community. Here are some, I won't go over this, but this is a QR code for our announcement event where we interviewed two companies that have used Quick since beta to achieve uh, results. And basically these are the results that reported going from like first contentful paint, if you know what it means uh, in terms of like a, core web vitals uh, and such, or web vitals in general, from eight seconds to 700 milliseconds, time to interact from nine seconds to 700 milliseconds, improve the SEO ranking instant, even on slow connection, like they demoed stuff in like a meeting room without any connect, like that is notorious for not showing demos and it worked. 
Uh, and they reported amazing developer experience, which is like the cross of the two things. Okay, what's next? On the roadmap, working on migration path patterns and best practices, a bigger ecosystem, working on solution for micro front ends and personalization, uh, auto of order, HTML streaming, lots of like bombastic names, but right? But it's all to like create the best and instant user experience and developer experience and next level of predictive buffering, which it will, could, get, could actually collect statistics uh, about this usage and bundle the chunks or the packets optimized to the users. So getting started, we have our docs, uh, we have uh, the Discord uh, community, we have on Facebook, Reddit, LinkedIn, you know, all the platforms you can join. Um, Quixel, if you want to learn how to use it, like to get, uh, get a quick introduction, <laughs> okay, <laughs> visit this. If you want to contribute, come join uh, the, um, the official GitHub repo. And we have also Quick UI that are looking for more contributors. By the way, I want to mention, I forgot, in the Quick Heroes, we have Gil Fink here, that is a Quick Hero and an awesome developer and person. Um, and uh, we have uh, Naori here, right? Is uh, one of the contributors for a Quick UI. We have all more contributors to Quick UI. We have Itai, right? Ah, right. Um, we have, I think, we have like three, four people, and we all are going to beers afterwards. Like all the contributors. So if you want to contribute to the project. Come and talk to us and we'll get you on board and stuff like that. It's very cool. Late night sessions, talking about everything but quick. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you very much. I'm sure I think these are all the details and let's continue with the show. Okay. <laughs>